episode 2,927 of the number one podcast in Apple Podcast for Job Search. You are listening to or watching No BS Job Search Advice Radio. I'm your host, Jeff Alpin, the Big Game Hunter, and welcome. People start to call me the Big Game Hunter when I did recruiting. I'd hunt down leaders and staff for organizations, did it for a long time, filled a lot of positions. Now people hire me for no BS job search, coaching, and career advice globally because I make the process of finding a new position and succeeding at it much easier. Now, I'll just simply say, if you're interested in my help with finding work beyond simply this show, come over to jobsearch.community where I have a number of different programs to help you Plus, whichever one you choose, you get access to all my video courses, books, and guides at a very reasonable price. Again, that's jobsearch.community. It's an add-on to the coaching or advice you receive from me. And if you looked online, you'd see I charge for these individually elsewhere, but I have them all bundled into one package. So whichever option you choose, whether you become an insider or all the way up to an Insider Premium member, I'm there to help. Now, today's show is one where this is an AMA, and Ask Me Anything I did a while ago about job hunting, where I answered a half a dozen questions from people. Every once in a while, I'd like to release these as one cohesive package uh, so that you get a sense of what my Tuesday at noon online that I do is like. Uh, Tuesdays at noon Eastern, I do career coach office hours on LinkedIn. I do it on YouTube. I do it on Facebook, on the Jeff Alp and the Big Game Hunter channel there. On LinkedIn, look up career coach office hours and the date, because again, Tuesdays at noon Eastern, and you'll be able to see uh, the show there. You can watch it live or you can mark that you'll attend. Send me your questions. And in this way, uh, be, by marking that you'll attend, LinkedIn will notify you when the replay is available if you can't make it live to get your questions answered and you'll hear your answers later. So again, this is an, uh, an Ask Me Anything About Job Hunting I did a while ago. Hope you enjoy it. Half a dozen questions to come. They'll be in the in the uh, uh, body of the show and or the show notes, I should say. I had a brain cramp there. And I'll be back in just one moment. Here are my questions for today. Oh, by the way, let me give you the LinkedIn address one more time. LinkedIn.com forward slash IN forward slash the big game. Now, question number one, and I think I've got six here today. Should I tell the interview I already have interviewer that I already have another job offer? Scenario is a um, person got an interview on Friday. They want to see this other job before committing to the first one. Should I tell the interviewer that I have another offer? The answer is going to sound contrary to something I've said in another video, and that is yes. Now, in the other video, it was being used as a gambit uh, in order to trick a firm into making an offer. Uh, and unfortunately, most people, when they play this gambit, they get these questions as a follow-up. And I'm just going to cover it with you. Well, why don't you just take the other job? Well, you know, I'm curious about yours. Uh, I just want to make you aware that I have this other offer. It's a good one but I want to find out more about your opportunity before making a decision. Or well, what kind of money? They'll go through all the tactics here. And when you don't have another offer, it feels like firms call your bluff. And basically, they'll say something along the lines of, well, we're going to engage in our process. It could take weeks. You'll have to make a decision too. And they're not going to wait for you. And I know the first firm that's already made the offer isn't going to wait for you. But you know, it's certainly possible that the second firm, the one that you're interviewing with, in this case on Tuesday, can accelerate the process. So unless you tell them they don't know to do that. So by all means, tell them that you already have another offer. Now, if you're bluffing, you know, frankly, the bluffs tend not to work because ultimately they say, we're going to engage in our process. And if it takes longer than you're hoping for, well, 
you know, we wish you very well. <laughs> and then suddenly you have to go, but, 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 and, and, and show that you lied to them. Not a good approach. But when you actually do have another offer, it's a good thing to do, right? So question number two, how do I find a job in the U.S. if I'm from outside of the country? Now, this is one of the great dilemmas of our time. This is not just true of our current administration, but previous ones as well. You need to obtain a visa. There are a limited number of visas available. Uh, and thus, at the time of year, which I believe is March, when the visa lottery occurs, you have to be a part of that lottery. The other approach is you need to be sponsored by a firm or brought to the United States by a firm that will hold an H-1B visa that will restrict your ability to change jobs for a period of time. Those are the basic ways to do it. Yes, there are lots more, but these are the primary ways that people get to the United States. Doesn't matter where in the world you're from, there's a limited number of visa applications that are accepted and for which you'll receive the H-1B visa. You can work for an employer that brings you to the United States on a B-1 visa, I believe it is. Uh, but the question becomes, how do you find a job in the U.S.? Well, you're hired for a job while you're overseas that brings you to the United States. That's the basic way that most people do it. Is it ideal? No. I'm not going to kid you. It's not ideal. But these are the rules that this country has set up. Uh, we, I'm not going to tell you to become an illegal immigrant uh, you know, in order to get a job. The legal way to do it is what I've outlined. Number three, how should I show a job in my family's business on my resume? The answer is the usual way. Uh, so it's listed on your resume as a job. You have a job title. You talk about your role and responsibilities. Now, let's say, um, let's use me as an example. Let's say uh, you know, it's Jeff Altman. I'm applying for a job, and I'm going to now list the Altman organization as my employer. Well, first off, people will think that I'm self-employed. Not a bad thing. Uh, or at the time of the interview, you can correct their impression when they talk with you about, what's this Alban organization thing that you've been working for? Oh, it's my father's business, my mother's business, my nephew's, my, my uncle's business I've been associated with. And I just want to be clear, I've been a real employee there. And what I've done is, you talk about your role, responsibilities, accomplishments. If you use technology, the technology that you've used, <laughs> excuse me, um, how much money you helped the firm make or save. You treat it like any other job on your resume uh, and present it you know, accurately, effectively, positively, and not defensively. As soon as you sound defensive, they, their response mentally is to go, I smell bullshit. Uh, so you don't want to do that. You want to... Um, you know, treat it like any other employer. Number four, what are some of the best career objectives written in a resume? The answer is none. Career objectives locks you into an alternative. It is a one-size-fits-all solution that's going to be on top of your resume, uh, as though every organization is going to be pleased by you writing, I want to work with a progressive firm where I can grow to my greatest potential. Who cares? That says nothing. It says nothing about you, nothing about your interests. At best, you put it into, the, uh, into your cover letter. And at worst... You know, frankly, I don't believe in career objectives. I think they um, will turn off more employers than turn on. It's an excuse to screen you out because using that one trite example I gave earlier, some firms are going to read that and go, oh, God, not another one, and they're just going to reject you. Why would you put something in there that's not going to get hired, to get you hired, but can cause you to be rejected? Career objectives on a resume don't work. I don't care how junior you are and how much space that you need to fill in your resume. Better to add another two lines of information about work that you've done previously than to put an objective on the resume. Number five, 
What are some of the most common mistakes people make in job interviews? How can these mistakes be avoided? Now, the most common mistake that people make, the one I see them make time and time again, is not being prepared for the interview and walking in ready to wing it when they answer interview questions. Not be prepared. I keep Notice that word I keep using. They're not prepared to answer common questions, let alone the more complex ones. If it's on your resume, you need to be prepared to talk about it. In addition, you should also learn what I call the best question to ask on any interview. You can get it. Well, I'll, I'll simply say I have a video about it on YouTube. I'm sure I've done podcasts as well. It's the, the single best question you should ask on any interview it is a Kindle book I have out. Uh, I've had it out for years. It's in there as well. Uh, I'll just simply say to answer this question, lack of preparedness is always the biggest mistake job hunters make on interviews. Last question, number six. Is it bad to quit your job when you have nothing else lined up already? You know, the only rules in job hunting is that there are no rules except those that work for you. Now, if you're being abused, by all means, if you're being uh, harassed, by all means, you get the hell out of there as fast as you can. Hey, Rebecca, you get out of there as fast as you can. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. You get out of there fast. Um, when asked on interviews um, about why you left without another job, uh, you can simply say, this was an untenable situation where um, I was being harassed by a manager. And rather than stay and put up with such behavior, I left. I don't care if you're male or female. You get the hell out of there. Now, beyond that, you have choices to make. If you can afford to leave and know full well that there's going to be a consequence when there's a negotiation, by all means, go ahead, take the summer off, go to the beach, travel, what have you. But there can be a consequence when you get to the actual job hunting side and start negotiating uh, for your final salary, because firms will think you might act immaturely with them. Again, these are your choices. Who cares what they think? As long as you're prepared to accept the consequences of the decision, by all means, get the hell out. You don't have to put up with other people's crap because of this bullshit system uh, that says, you know, you shouldn't leave a job without something else. It's your life. You only have one life to go through. Know full well what your consequences are. If you don't have money in the bank, don't do it. You know, because it's, it's going to be a painful proposition. Um, but uh, I'll simply say you can leave. You can stay. It's your choice, not theirs. And you'll understand why I say that later on in life. So, so that's today's show. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, visit jobsearch.community. There's a lot more there that will help you. In the meantime, I'll be back with more tomorrow. Have a terrific day and be great.